Hi, it's Jeff Jarvis here from discoverdoublebase.com and I am joined by our classical teacher, or one of our classical teachers, uh, the wonderful Jason Heath. Jason, thanks for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be here. I've had such a great week working on these courses and I've been such a fan and have learned so much from the other courses you put out, so it's just so cool to be a part of this. Oh, it's been a real pleasure to present your material, Jason. And I've, I've um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. And I've also, of course, really enjoyed listening to you on the podcast. Uh, Contra Based Conversations, just a little plug for that. If you don't know about Contra Based Conversations, follow the link below and you can hear Jason discuss double bass with literally hundreds of uh, world-class players. Now today, I'm just gonna grill Jason uh, really quickly about his preferences for equipment, strings, bows, this kind of thing all the geeky stuff that we like to talk about as double bass players. So it's only going to be a short video. Let's get straight into it. Jason, what kind of double bass are you playing? Um, what double bass brands do you tend to recommend to people, perhaps to new students and what have you? Sure. Well, uh, I, I do a lot of traveling. So in addition to my personal bass, which I'll describe, I play on a lot of basses all over the place. So my personal bass is made by Albert Jackstadt. Yeah. Al Jackstadt. It's from 1995. A lot of Orchestral players have jackstat basses, and they're, I, I affectionately call it an orchestra cannon. It's yeah. this big 7 8 bass, fairly narrow uh, upper bout, and then a pretty wide lower bout. And it's easy to get around, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and I just I just love it. It's got a great, great tone. Uh, String-wise, I use all sorts of things. I'm not that picky. I really like the Diderio Kaplan's right now. I've been using those, but I've used strings by Parastro and other brands. Uh, as well. For my bow, I actually have my personal bow here. This is a, a bow by Bernd Doling, who is a German maker, but actually makes a, a mean French bow. So I've had this for maybe 12, 13 years, and it's a gold mounted, which uh, doesn't affect the tone, but they usually put the gold on the premium sticks. So yeah. it, it's a great bow, performs really well, and really well balanced. Um, in terms of basis for students, um, uh, disclaimer, I do work for Eastman Strings, um, and and I love their instruments, so I do recommend Eastman basses, but there are many other great basses out there. I think the most important thing is to get something that's really well set up, that doesn't have strings that are too high or that have the fingerboard kind of warping near the top. Um, there are so many bad habits that will come from playing a bass that isn't properly set up. I would rather take the, maybe not the cheapest bass, but a less expensive bass and, and spend a couple hundred dollars on a setup. I, I would send a student out on that any day than a more expensive base that isn't well set up. So I think that's so key. Yeah, I mean the difference, and the other thing is to throw on a, a good set of strings, because typically if you're buying a budget instrument, they're often shipped with lower mm -hmm. quality strings, but if you're making sure that you're getting a good brand, Diodario, Perastro, Tomastic, mm -hmm. one of mm -hmm. these guys, you're gonna be really uh, off to a good start. I think that's great advice. Just a couple of questions about, so just to clarify as well, the bass that Jason's sat with at the moment is actually uh, my instrument. This is an old German bass that's uh, had a lot of work done to it over the years. Um, but the Jack Stad, did you buy that new? No, I bought it, I bought it uh, used. It was, uh, I bought it in 2005, so it was already, uh, what is that, uh, 10 years old? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but it has even matured since I've had it. So 15, yeah. my, you see how slow my maths is? It's 2020, it's and we're struggling with this. Yeah, 15, so, I think. So it's, uh, that has even mellowed over the years. It's great, but before that bass, actually, and I've really enjoyed playing your bass, Jeff, yeah. I had a, a great old German bass from the late 19th century, yeah. and I loved that bass. I uh, was sad to, to sell that, but it's gone on uh, and had a great life and has been even used on some albums, so it's great. I, I like to think of us as, and, and this is not my line, I've heard this from several people, we're stewards of these instruments. These instruments yeah. were here before us, they'll be here after us, and we're just on the journey with them. So I, I love and respect all these different instruments and their personality. Your bass has a personality, my jack set has a personality, and it's just, that's one of the cool things about playing a stringed instrument like the bass is the individuality of the instrument. I mean, it, there's so many variables, isn't there? We were talking about that this week um, a, a lot. The fact that there's no standardized, or it's very non-standard. There's so right. much that varies from instrument to instrument mm -hmm. uh, for the double bass. Um, are there any particular things that you look for if you, I mean, 
fairly standard string lengths, I guess. And yeah, I know. think I think um, uh, err on the smaller side in all of those dimensions. You can always yeah. expand. I, I have students and students' parents ask, and adult uh, learners ask, like, "Hey, do you think I should get a bigger base? Get a bigger base?" You know, uh, mm -hmm. and my answer is almost always wait, delay. I would rather see somebody. You know, you don't want to be playing an eight size base when you're six feet tall, but it's. In, I would rather I would rather have the instrument be easy to get around and yes the the size of the instrument does affect the tone maybe not as much in terms of the volume as people think mm. but I would always rather have something to get around with that easily with that mm. in mind I generally prefer bases that have a little bit more sloping shoulders mm. and that are a little less wide up here mm. this dimension right here even if it's a, an, an inch or two bigger than this, can be really hard so for the, students. The rib depth, the rib depth, yeah. and the and the and the, the shape of, of the, the upper about yeah. yeah the shoulders can have a huge impact. And then in terms of string length, uh, I generally play around forty one and a half. You so know, that, something that's like what that. this instrument is. Yeah, yeah. And, and so if you're going to. Uh, some people play 44 inch string mm. length. Uh, I think, and everybody's a different shape. Thing there, and there are positives and negatives to all these different string lengths. But I think, especially when you're starting out, uh, play something that's easy to get around. So keep that string length. Uh, I would, I would recommend 41 and a half. Or if you're, if you're, if even that's a bit of a stretch, you could go down from that. And I've seen great instruments that have a shorter string length than that. Yeah, I think absolutely. If you aim for people when they're making new instruments, they tend to be. You know, forty-one and a half yeah. inches is pretty standard D-neck. You know, for the uh, for the neck heel, and um, yeah, that seems to be a good place. But I mean, certainly you get forty-two; it'll be great. Mm -hmm. You know, if you mm -hmm. go an inch or so lower, it'll still be you know uh, uh, well within the you know uh, the tolerances. Just lastly, Jason, you are possibly the most travelled person <laughs> that I speak to. Every time I speak to you, you're going to a different event, you're going to these conferences, you're representing Eastman Strings or Contrabass Conversations. You travel a lot, and of course, all of your performance uh, and education work. Do you ever fly with your double bass? Uh, no, I haven't flown with my double bass since the year 2000. Yeah. I, I, um, so that limits what I'll play at some of these events. If it's uh, there, are, there are pieces that I work on, and I think, it's ready, but only on my base. Yes. So I don't have the courage to pull out some repertoire on another base. But I, um, I, you know, yes, you can fly with a base. It, it's possible. Lots of people do it. Removable necks uh, are, are available, and and people are finding solutions. So I think I think it's and there's a beauty to playing on your instrument, or even mm -hmm. if it's a travel base, it's your base. Um, I just love. Putting my backpack, you know, under the seat, and I head off, and and I love the liberation of not carrying my bass around. And the great Russian bass player Artem Cherkov ha was talking to me about how he and he's a wonderful soloist. Won the Bratitich competition back in two thousand seven. Uh, he not only plays on borrowed basses, but he prefers it because he says that that unites him with the bass community, which is this welcome to the bass community. You know, it's just such a cool and warm and inviting place. And he actually likes the process of looking for a bass and, and connecting with one of the local players and playing this bass. And he has a, a warm up routine of about five minutes covering the entire fingerboard and kind of just measuring the bass. And it works. I saw him play fabulously in tune, just absolutely comfortably on this base that he just picked up like an hour before. So if he can do it, I can hopefully do it. I think that's a fantastic point and I love the idea of connecting with the community. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you want to learn more about the double bass, there is Discover Double Bass and you can watch all of our videos. But I personally have learned so much from your uh, podcast, Contra Bass Conversations, and I would recommend it strongly to everybody here. Please go and check out Jason's uh, website, which will have links for all the episodes that you can listen to on your favorite uh, podcast player and you will learn a, a lot, I'm sure, uh, definitely. So Jason, thanks so much for joining me today and thank you so much for watching at home. We'll see you next time.